the light on. I'm filming right now. I don't want me turn the light on. You don't need the light. Wait. <laughs> Get a light going. Oh shit, I'm yeah, blinded. Yeah, I guess I don't need to fucking blind you with the light. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, what's what's the date today? Um today is December eighteenth. Well, no, it's not, it's the eighteenth. It's the seventeenth, but I mean past midnight, so eighteenth. That's the eighteenth? Well then it literally is the eighteenth, because yeah. we're well, well past midnight now. Yeah. yeah. Fuck. Okay. No, I'm not gonna <laughs> blast the fucking light on you, man. Um, I I always just want to hear your predictions. We can, I like I like throwing predictions out before they happen, yeah. so we can I mean, publicize it on YouTube and see if it comes true. Yeah, obviously it's like a total guess. Yeah. Um, nobody knows what's gonna happen in football games, obviously. Yeah, we're talking football right now. Um, College football, right? But I have a few. Yeah, I have a few predictions. Okay. And things I'm gonna bet on. Um, so I like the money line on the following two games. I got UCF winning against Florida. UCF um, versus Florida in the Sugar Bowl. Uh, I don't uh, know. Gasparilla. Gasparilla Bowl. <laughs> Not even close to as prestigious. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. guys both suck then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, we're both are not that great. Uh, um, but, but UCF, the underdog. Yes. By What's the spread? 5.5 or something? About 6.5 right now, I think. Okay. Um, uh, UCFC underdog, so the money line's going to have a great payout. It's going to probably be like around two times or something, maybe even more. Gotcha. Somewhere around there. Um, I like that because UCF's going to be motivated more than ever. We've been waiting for a matchup. I say we because I'm an alumni from uh, UCF. Mm. Um, but we've been waiting for that matchup for a very long time. I feel like the coach is going to have them motivated. Players are going to be motivated for future like recruiting and all that. And then the Gators are in a lot of trouble right now. Um, a lot of yeah, they've their, been falling apart. A lot of their the players of their are decommitting. Year. They're transferring, entering the portal, um, including quarterbacks and stuff. So like, yeah, they're in disarray right now. So yeah. I do like the Knights to just like win it outright. And I feel like we're going to fill up the stadium. I imagine it's going to be like seventy thirty. Like I know that sounds crazy. To where's a lot it being played? Fans. Yeah, where's Gator it being played? Be like, no way, no way. We're gonna show up like fifty-fifty at least. I don't know. I, what is I, it? I some neutral like location? What is it? It's in Tampa at the Buck Stadium. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. It really is equidistant yeah. between both teams. Yeah. You know, Orlando and Gainesville. Yeah. To go to Tampa. Yeah. That's pretty equidistant. Yeah. So it really is neutral, but I could totally see UCF just showing up and just filming. Yeah. Oh, there are a lot of Gator fucking alumni and fans yeah. in Tampa, though. You got to think about that. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, the Gator fan base is like by far bigger. It's bigger. It's a more popular brand for sure yeah. Yeah. around here. Their stadium, I think, seats like 80,000 people, and Raymond James is probably around like 50, 60, somewhere around but there. But I'm, I'm with you on the poll of the, just the, the massive population of that school in Orlando making that trip that isn't too far to just go fill this place up. Yeah. So um, that could give a good neutral, f almost home field advantage to UCF. It was pretty even. It'd be interesting. I mean, it's, it's neutral, cool. yeah, but, like, I don't know. I feel like uh, once UCF heard about this matchup, they jumped the gun, like, much quicker than the Gators did. You know, like, they were buying tickets within, like, the hour. Gotcha. Versus gotcha. Gator fans were probably waiting, like, maybe even a day or two. And so... Yeah, uh, yeah. We're going to see a, I yeah. think a big turnout. Clever for Knights. Knights or, I imagine or... Raymond James is going to be mostly, like, black and gold, so... We'll gotcha. See. It's almost like the Knights were more amped for yeah. this opportunity and this, this yeah. season, yeah. despite not being up to par. Yeah. You know, it didn't play out the way you guys wanted it. Yeah. But compared to the Gators, it's like you guys have a lot of steam in your sales. Yeah. And, and the bowl game matchup definitely, like, hyped up the fan base a lot because... Yeah, know, yeah, like, for sure. Usually we get stuck with, like, some, like, not nobody's... Four like, states over kind like, of matchup. Yeah, last year was, like, BYU, and it's, like, okay, okay. they're out of, uh, what is it, Wyoming or... Uh, yeah, yeah. North... north uh, Midwest, yeah, yeah. Yeah, nothing um, that can be a right, a quote unquote yeah, rival. Right. Where's BYU? Uh, 
I didn't go to I didn't go to no college. <laughs> I don't know no um, schools. But, yeah, the, I mean they're they're out of the fucking really far west northwest. Um, so that matchup was just kind of like boring, you know. Like I don't know, it didn't have much like excitement. Whereas this one is like, you know, the fans are gonna show up. Got you. Okay, yeah. so the real question is, um, w- given the spread, do you would you find it? If you were to give advice, financial advice, <laughs> you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> no, not. supposedly, like, and I mean by you, I mean like just people in general. Like, there's this this thing on the internet where it's like, this is not, this is not financial advice. Like, people have to give this like, the scripted disclaimer on like, yeah. FYI, don't don't terminate my channel. This is not financial. It's like fuck that. <laughs> now that's some financial advice. Like, would you uh, advise people? Um, go with the spread just to double their money right. and and play it safe and go with UCF the only thing to I'll, cover I'll the spread. This is the spread is going to be worthless. It's either going right. to be a blowout either way. Okay, either got the you. the Gators and the Knights are going to run away with this. So you're saying it's, it's a coin be, flip. It's not going to be a three-point game, I don't think. Got you. Yeah. One team's going to win pretty decisively, yeah. and you feel like because it's going to be one or the other and it's almost like momentum is leaning towards Knights, you're saying go with the UCF Knights. Yeah. Um, like, take the money line because then you get a, a big multiplier on your bet. Correct. Just yes. just go with like UCF is going to win this game outright. Yep. And then your hundred dollar bet should yield you two hundred fifty bucks or whatever. Pretty much, yeah. And well, I feel fuck. like that. I mean, it's risky, obviously. Um, yeah. But it's. Uh, I feel like it's pretty fun and. Safe, but yeah, it's, it's a lot funner and safer than your average bet in life, you know. Yep. If I yep. can, uh, yeah, I could make a video game analogy, you know. You, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you bet that Henry Hatsworth is gonna quadruple in price in a year, and you <laughs> fucking eat it, you know. Sometimes things yeah. like that happen. The one thing that could screw up UCF from like winning that game though is quarterback play because they have a true freshman. Mikey Keen, and it all comes down to him. Like, you know, obviously if he throws, like, two picks, I think the Gators win. If he holds it to no picks, UCF wins. So, Wow. That's what it comes down to. You're saying UCF quarterback, yeah. true freshman. Yep. He's been playing all year? Yep. Okay. Uh, not all year. He missed the first three games because uh, Dylan Gabriel was playing, but then he got hurt. And now he's transferred out, so... Gotcha. Like, he can... So he's been the starter. He's he's, uh, acclimated. Yeah. Um, And then my... What was the other pick? pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One other pick. On to my next pick. So I was right about this last time, and I told everybody about this. Everybody was like, oh, you're crazy, you're crazy. So um, the SEC championship game, everybody was like, oh, yeah, Georgia's going to stomp all over Alabama. I was like, no way. Like, after looking at Georgia's, like, schedule... They had the easiest schedule in all of the SEC. Easiest by far. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they stomped every team, but their biggest win was, like, um, barely above 500 teams. They had three teams that beat barely above 500. Barely. And they started the year ranked, sure. Okay, so you look at the schedule, you're like, oh, man, they played four ranked teams. No. All the teams ended the season unranked. Or near unranked, you know, like gotcha. above 20. Kind of like the De- Denver Broncos at the beginning of the season in the yeah, NFL. just like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I was like, oh, yeah, I'll take Bama all the way. And I was fucking right. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I took Bama and obviously won that now. Yeah. Um, and I feel like Michigan is about to do the same thing to Georgia again. Georgia is yeah, about to yeah, do. So yeah, yeah, I yeah. like Michigan, and Michigan's the underdog, so the money line is looking really Ooh, good. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Big shot call there. Yeah, I think it's an eight-point spread. Wow. And Holy shit. So the payout is like um, plus okay. 240 or something. So. In this case, would you just take the money line on Michigan? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Definitely the money line. Wow. The Not the spread. Uh, I, would I, you I, ever? Would you ever consider... Um, Oh fuck! What's it? I, I'm drunk. I want to say the right term, not hemorrhaging your bet or not uh, padding your bet. With, uh, it's called uh, uh, hedging. Hedging, yeah, hemorrhaging, yeah. <laughs> uh, hedging your bet. 
Um, by by taking one where you just take Michigan with the spread and then take one where you take the money line. Again, you I'm might betting, win them both. When I'm betting, it's just like silly money. I never do anything crazy. It's not like I'm pulling down like okay. ridiculous amounts of money. It's just like for fun, you know. So this um, is your financial advice yeah. to to Thanks. the the person that just wants to have fun with uh, twenty bucks or whatever. But I, high upside, going for high upside. This I feel is your like Michigan just outright winning that game. Um, now, is this your financial advice? <laughs> no. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I tried to trap oh, you. Oh, oh. If we're talking about financial advice, buy Burger Five. Oh, there you go. Five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fucking got him. I baited him in his Burger Five talk. Uh, financial advice, Burger Five. <laughs> no, no, go back to that football game, though. <laughs> fuck. Fuck Burger Five. So, yeah. I like Michigan a lot. Um, they've been very dominant against some of the best teams, obviously, like Ohio State well, who, in the last game. What are their dominant positions? I don't watch college football. I play fantasy football in the NFL, Devin. <laughs> I don't necessarily understand college football. What, do they have a fantastic quarterback over there in Michigan? Um, they're more about like the run game um, okay. in, in defense. Uh, I mean, Georgia is known for their defense, too. But, again, they haven't played anybody that can, like, outscore them in the first half. Like, yeah, they've yeah. had the lead every single game in the yeah. first half. They have that every, SEC defense. Yeah, every single game. Like, yeah. they, take, they take a lead in the first half and then just play out the game. Yeah, yeah. Um, kind of the Obviously, format. Alabama challenged that, and they start to panic. So, G- oh. I see that happening again with uh, Michigan. So, it's like almost like when they're not in control of the game. Mm-hmm via their possession of the ball and their defense, they really kind of lose their composure, Yeah, as we've seen. It's normal for any team. You know, like, any college team that's just dominating from, like, quarter one, you know, like, as soon as they fall behind, they're like, oh, shit, what do we do? You know, like, what? Oh, my God. So really what it comes down to is you feel like Michigan has a comparable defense or an adequate enough defense to really match up against Georgia's offense. Uh, Georgia, like... I really don't know much about their offense. It's more about their it's defense. It's lackluster, is what you're saying. Is yeah, like yeah, yeah. Nothing. It's, they probably have a lot of, like, opportunities because of their defense, you know? Yeah, yeah. Turnovers and stuff. And, you know, like, um, punting from, like, you know, their own 10. And then they get the ball at, like, the 50 or whatever. Um, I don't think their offense is that um, explosive. Okay. So, I really like... I like Michigan a lot. Yeah, yeah, got I, you, I, got you. I think Michigan you're feeling has, the upset in your yeah, bones. Yeah. You feel like it could be a close game. I don't even think it's an upset, really. I think I think they're like evenly matched. It's just like there's so much bias and like favoritism to the SEC that you know it has Georgia. Got you. That much of a favor. I'm gonna give my financial advice. Very blind, just based off what you're saying right now. Is given like this eight point spread. Everything you've said right now, my financial advice would be to not take the money line and just take Michigan to cover the spread. That's going to be my financial advice, you know, yeah. based on everything you've said. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Again, who's... Nobody's going to take the money line with, like, a huge wager, you know, like, any of the huge bettors, are, they're not going to do the money line. They're probably going to take the spread. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, if you have play money exactly yeah that's the you thing. want to take the money line that's the thing then you, get, if you like, hate georgia or triple there, there's a lot of scenarios where you might want to just take the money line you, you don't like georgia mm-hmm. you know whatever yeah. or why ever that may be yeah. or you're a michigan fan or you're you know from the north and you just want to bet on the far, furthest team from the north yeah. and you're from wisconsin you're from canada you're from <laughs> new york you just want to go with a higher fucking longitude or is it latitude, longitude, you know? And you go for Michigan because yep. you don't like the South, you know? That may be a good reason to just take that money line and go with Michigan. But if you're taking financial advice from yours truly, from Dave, <laughs> I'd say uh, uh, take the spread. But take Michigan. Go with Devin's gut on this. Good fucking uh, good game analysis. So you're, <laughs> you're going uh, UCF. Um Again, you're you're all about your money line, not the spread line, not not going with the your fifty fifty nice. odds where they okay. account for point yeah. spread. You're going straight for the the fucking upside of the payout. Again, that's why they attract me the most is because like the spread is like, you know, seven plus. 
therefore the money line is going to have a great payout. Like it's three to be one. At least two times. Yeah, two to and one, three to one. Stuff like that really attracts me when I feel like it should be almost a dead even line. Mm, I feel like UCF mm -hmm. Florida should be dead even. And you're, it's and you're, gonna be a fifty-fifty. It's gonna be. So a you would admit flip. it's a coin flip. Yeah, oh, you'd yeah. admit that oh, yeah. you're gambling a the coin Gators flip away. Win because their talent is like probably so much better. But you know? the thing yeah. is, it's in your mind. It's yeah. It's it's lands on heads. You lose twenty-five cents. Lands on tails. You win seventy-five cents. Exactly. So it's it's exactly. kind of like you flip that coin enough Nailed times it. and you'll you'll Nailed win. It. I think the spread is not right. Yeah. Yeah. So if you were to put a hundred bucks on both of these bets that you're saying with the money line, you could lose one. You could win the other bet, and you'd come out ahead. Yeah. And the odds are come great. Out 275 or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The odds are great that you'll, you'll yep. win both. Okay, uh, I'll close on. Uh, I'm going to upload this to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. <laughs> um, any, uh, any closing thoughts, Stephen? Any, uh, you said BurgerFi? Um, again, this is not my uh, financial advice. Uh, oh, my God. No, you should just admit that it is. It, you were telling me it's at an all-time low. So shame on you for ever recommending this. No, I'm, I'm talking about the betting part. <laughs> oh, I was going to go to BurgerFi now. No, you don't want to fucking hey, hype BurgerFi? Anybody who's patient, I guarantee BurgerFi is going to net you a profit eventually. All right, now I can razz you, though, and say that, you know, you said that a year ago, Devin. And well, I want to say what BurgerFi a year hey, ago is what nine dollars a share. Ten year hold, all right. Um, in ten years, it's gonna have Devin, a huge profit. Look, I on my on my YouTube channel, Devin. I dedicated. Uh, 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 I dedicated right an episode. It's so cheap right now. You literally can't lose. It's like hey, six fifty a share. You know, it's yeah, so cheap. It's convenient of you to say now, but one of my video titles is. Hashtag BFI invest in BurgerFi. I don't know. It's one of my uh, hundred or so videos yeah, well, I put out, and I I get BurgerFi a huge shout out. <laughs> and you said to buy it, and I I want to say at the time it was what nine dollars a share, and now it's down to what six fifty a share, yeah, Devin. Yeah. You know how embarrassing that is that for is me. Embarrassing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. But it should have just like gone straight up, right? Yeah, well, so you're saying that right now is a better time than ever to buy BurgerFi, hashtag BurgerFi. Yeah. All right. I'm jealous of anybody who's buying in now. Because uh, they're averaging so, less yeah, than you? I'm so fucking jealous. So now's a That's good... like half of, like, my average. My average is, like, 11-something. So now's a good time and for me to I have, buy... I have so much trust in them. Like, okay, so I went to uh, Sparkman Wharf yesterday. And... What the fuck is Sparkman Wharf? Um, it's... Ugh. You ever heard of like boxy parks like uh no where basically it's like a wide open field and like they drop a whole bunch of like uh you know like train boxes or like semi truck like boxes what the fuck and they create like restaurants within them what the so, fuck so you go to this place and there's a whole bunch of restaurants in this small little area and you is this just, real like, yeah you can just sample restaurants all over the place it and, sounds like fortnite <laughs> The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> okay. This shit just drops down from the sky. Okay, I'm trying to follow. <laughs> the fuck? See, you're you're fucking with players. me. I'm yeah, fucking I'm drunk. Keep going. I'm keep going. Uh, yeah. yeah, they just drop from the sky, dude. And it's insane. Uh, All of a sudden, there's a pizza place right next to you. It's the crazy. Fuck? Yeah. Okay. And then, and then all of a sudden, you look to the left. There's a burger fry. What? There's a burger fry there. You're making an analogy. This is a dude, metaphor. Dude, I was at Sparkman, and all of a sudden, there's a burger fry right. You're there. fucking with like, me. Shut oh, up. Oh my god, there's a burger fry. Shut the fuck up. You're making dude. analogies or metaphors or something. And it was packed. There was a lot of people there. This, you're speaking metaphorically. <laughs> now I get you. All right, so I'm confused. But what you're saying is, what the fuck were you saying about? Another company other than BurgerFi there? Uh, Sparkman York? <laughs> what did you say? Spark, Sparkman's Wharf. What the fuck? It's in Tampa. It's downtown Tampa. And it's like a boxy park, as they call them, or whatever. Um, a boxing park? Boxy. Maybe I'm you, thinking of like the, the one in Orlando. You're in a it's different class park. than me. I'm lower class, and you're <laughs> fucking upper middle class. I don't understand all this shit. Okay. Think of it this way. It's a whole bunch of, like, uh, food trucks that are just, like, permanently there. Okay. They're, like, perma there. Oh, yeah. And it's a cool place to just hang out with your dog and your kids and all that. And a lot of families go there. Um, 
but uh, Burger Fi just opened a new location. Okay. I this week. I or get it. Last week. I you probably said this before, and I was just fucking zoning out, not thinking. Yeah, too, yeah, got you, got you. Opening locations like everywhere. Okay, so and the, I know of many like locally around here just popping up, and I'm like, holy crap, they're yeah. like spinning. Yeah, it's kind of like they're picking their spots with yeah, tact. Yeah, yeah, you right. know, like they oh. want to be in that ritzy. Would you say this there, dog part that you were describing just now that sounded like Fortnite? It's high Fortnite, end. Oh, it's high end. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're really like trying. There's like ten dollars, eleven dollars for yeah. not at the Burger Fi, but within the park. All right, to so the if folks at to, home. Yeah, yeah. I just got a, you know a little personal uh, experience. My limited uh, scope of the world. Thirty-three years old. Um, limited scope. But um, the first time I ever experienced a Wawa gas station was very close to Devon's campus in UCF. We were talking about <laughs> UCF football, talking about all that earlier. But Wawa gas stations, Devon gave me the scoop on that. How they were from the Northeast, like kind of Pittsburgh area, Philly, uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Okay, so that's where they originated from and they had this uh business model where they'd be kind of like a subway meets a convenience store meets a, a gas station so it's like hey everybody needs fuel so we're gonna make this convenience store but we're gonna kind of combine it with like the ready to order pick your you know key use a kiosk order your food coffee all your drugs that you need you know your caffeine your energy drinks just very sharp clean um, delicious and affordable um, business model for food, gas station convenience. Anyways, long story short, um, they positioned their business very close to campuses. Close to, they had like a couple, I want to say, around UCF. UCF yeah. Like, hey, we got this good, affordable um, bang for our buck as far as how much it costs to open up these these locations. Oh fuck. Oh, uh, the flashlight's been turned off? Okay, the video's still rolling. Cool. Um, yeah, as, as far as, like, how many people we get to introduce our brand to for how much it costs, yada, yada. Anyways, long story short, like, I remember Devin telling me, I was I was still very young, Devin was very young at the time, and the prediction was, like, these are going to take over. You you were saying that a long time ago, that Wawa's going to end up taking over. Yeah. And sure enough, it's already like oh, yeah, it's I think it's covered Florida. It's yeah. up into Georgia now. Yep. I mean, they're fucking taking over. Oh, yeah. So it's it's when you can kind of see the um, kind of the root system of like a yeah. fucking plant, or I almost think of like a mushroom. So I make weird fucking analogies, but like <laughs> the way a mushroom will. Even as mushrooms. Yeah, well, they, they're very intelligent <laughs> organisms, or they're very good about they're using they're, their resources. They are simple, but they they're very Felicity resourceful. Smart, right? They're very resourceful. They're perfectly programmed to just um, acquire nutrients and branch out where it's most efficient, and then they will cut branches where it's not efficient. Yeah. They will just do everything that is the most efficient to acquire nutrients to the you know the host. They're simple. Very simple. Very effective, and that's kind of uh, the Wawa business model. Um, now I'm off on a weird tangent now, but to <laughs> tie it all back to uh, BurgerFi, that's that sounds like exactly what BurgerFi is doing, where they're investing into locations that aren't just like good mainstay locations. It's more like marketing locations, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. That's a long way of getting to my point there, I guess, but yeah, yeah. it's almost like they pick these spots based on like, hey, it's the people here that we want to impress. More so than just the logistics of this location and how many burgers we're going to sell, if that makes sense. So, um, burger fight. It's, but, it's uh, at an all time low, too, from yeah. what you're saying. And as a customer, I love their product. You know, like at UCF, I remember going there and being blown away. And I would go there all the time and get a beer. Because they have like crap beer, like local, like crap beer at, you know, every location. Um, Much like a what's that Hispanic place the the burrito burrito place Moe's or whatever I guess there's a few that are like that. I mean I haven't been to a Moe's in some years. Um, yeah, Tijuana Tijuana Flats or whatever. Um, uh, yeah, there's several places like that. Okay, where Tijuana have, has beer. Um, yeah, they'll have beer. I haven't been to one of those in a long time either. But yeah, uh, BurgerFi definitely like as a customer, not even like just because I'm trying to like sell like the stock or whatever, um, but. Uh, 
I do love their product. Um, the onion rings are fucking amazing. The chicken tenders are some of the best I've ever had, uh, along with the sauces. Uh, uh, I don't know. Like, I feel like it's gonna explode. We it, talked about this. Time. We talked about this earlier. This is like the opposite of the the meme meme stock meme coin type yeah, of approach yeah, to investing yeah. or it's just so, like yeah. hey I want to invest in this because I think everybody else is and I want to ride the rising tide that's, with that's everybody else that's like the, last, the meme formula right yeah that's been the la- uh, the thing for the last like two years um, everybody's like hopping into you know GameStop and AMC and um, I mean this has been a bummer but wish uh, and that's one I actually am kind of high on too because it's like, so cheap right now you're it's telling. so cheap like with the amount of revenue and stuff they're making, um, it, it what's that now sense. for for the future for the camera? Um, is that three bucks a share? You're like saying three dollars and twenty cents. Okay, or something? I don't know. you're saying bye bye bye. Yeah, I like that a lot. Again, um, I like recording this because in yeah. five years from now we could oh, God. we could look at this and be like, oh my god. Like ten years from now, it's, it's like the new Amazon. Like it took over the world. Very it's likely like, could. They show a lot of provocative ads on social media. I've noticed. Wish, yeah, yeah. yeah a lot of. Uh, but yeah. Imagine if they. Partner with like a metaverse, you know, like fucking word. All of a sudden, you're like shopping in the fucking digital world, you know. Like, dude, they're already one of the biggest spenders on Facebook marketing, from what I can tell. Dude, I'm calling it. I'm on Facebook right. a lot because of my marketing that I have to do, and it's like I see Wish all over. You're yeah, right. You're I'm right. It. They right. get in on Meta. If they, yeah, if yeah, they yeah. Partner with like a uh, Facebook or Meta. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, I'm with that. That's gonna be the, the the new like Amazon. Like, I mean, Amazon yes. is not that great. Like, uh, well, you're a huge third party provider on Amazon, and so I you kind of have a perspective on this. I mean, <laughs> like Amazon is good, but you I feel know. you feel like there's efficiencies that other companies could kind of yeah. kind of squeeze in oh, yeah, the yeah. market. Amazon with. has so many flaws. So many flaws. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. The seller side, the buyer side. Oh my it's god. It's like they're so not perfect flaws. and therefore some another company or companies. Yeah. It's kinda of like honestly, I, I haven't looked too closely at Mercari, but from what I've seen with the interface of Mercari, they're fierce competitors with eBay. You'd be surprised. Yeah. At, like how much I think this eBay's weird Asian die. underdog Mercari where they're fucking based out of price on Asian fucking Chinese shit. But like, <laughs> like they're really modeled after eBay and they're going for eBay's throat and they're trying yep. to supplant it. Yep. You know, and that's, that could happen with Wish and Amazon yep. for sure. I think eBay is going to die over the next like 10 years. Um, Fuck. I think within 10 years, eBay is probably going to be dead. I need to prepare for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, 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 I feel it. I don't know. Uh, um, but then you know you have other marketplaces. Who knows who's going to be like the new like throne? It could be Mercari, could be Wish, could be fucking uh, Shopify, could be you know mm, Etsy. Mm, Any of these could like take the throne and yeah. be the new Amazon. But I could think be somebody, could be Meta, could be Meta Marketplace yeah, or something. Yeah, somebody might overthrow Amazon in the next ten years, and that's that's how it goes every every decade. Yeah. There is a new throne. Yeah. Um, in the stock market, like every decade, for the no matter how the powerful market. the previous guard was, yeah. like they just get yeah. washed out. Yeah. Sears, Sears, Roebuck, and stuff like yeah. these dynasties that, like people of their generation would perceive as invincible, just yeah. get wiped out by a new technology or a new fad. Yeah, uh, that's fucking scary. So. Well, really quick, uh, back to BurgerFi, just kind of close on this. Um, one optimistic thing that you and I talked about, because you got me excited about wanting to buy into it, and I've been excited for about the last year. I just keep putting my money in the fucking stupid yeah. video games. You still haven't, like, eaten at one. I, I feel like once you eat at <laughs> one, you're going to be like, oh, my God. I ate, a, I ate at one, games. like, four years ago, I swear to God, and they were advertising... <laughs> locally that yeah i feel like i i definitely ate at one of those establishments they were advertising that they're hiring people and uh they were giving away like a free buy one get one free burger or some kind of crazy promotion i, I swear to god i tr- it. maybe it was a different place then that yeah. okay i don't want to speak for for certain but on something that you might be talking about like bar louie or i don't know it could have been else. it could have been another establishment yeah. that tried to branch out here yeah. to this area 
but um Dude. but no um the the okay the biggest upside i feel okay this is kind of my uh conspiracy theory not really conspiracy theory it's my prophetic vision of the future that i feel coming how can you not see this one coming fucking drones in the sky more common than a bird in the sky more yeah. common than a flock of crows where you see a so such a large flock of birds that it almost looks like a dark cloud or it looks like smog and you're like oh my god it's a bunch of crows Honestly, you I know we've all had visions of that before we've all seen that either in a movie or we've seen it with our own eyes we see a flock of birds i think prepare to see that with your own eyes by the time you die you will absolutely get used to seeing in the sky thousands of drones just autonomously flying around with perfect precision where they don't fly into each other and it's just it looks like smog but these things each have independent destinations maybe they even fly in packs to reduce wind resistance and fly more efficiently (laughs) holy fucking scariness within like five years yeah like that kind of fucked up shit the kind of terminator 2 shit five years honestly like i had that thought this morning i looked into the sky and i was like yeah, oh like, no drones either. I can't believe it yeah you're almost like you're living like a future going, past life yeah it should yeah. be going on right now yeah you're like wait a second isn't this normal oh no that's right I haven't this isn't my time yet <laughs> that's right I've only been gifted this vision of the future and I'm living the paradise of 2021 before it all happens yeah it's gonna be hell it's gonna be shit have you ever watched uh, a drone and, like, racing and stuff I don't want to see that shit. It's amazing. I'd rather it's play cool. Star Fox 64. It's, it's cool. It's probably real life fucking Star Fox. I mean, it's a whole bunch of like super nerds that are good at video games that just like pilot like drones and fly it through a stadium. <laughs> so like they go to like, you know, like uh, the Colt Stadium or something and fly through like the stadium. It's, it's pretty cool. I, I guess that's alright. It's okay. I don't know. I want to see him do combat with them. That'd be cool. But wait, where does this apply to BurgerFi? Let me close on this. I don't know. <laughs> I got an idea. I got. I have a direction. I wouldn't be talking about drones for no good um, good reason. It's because of the ghost kitchen aspect. All right. Uh, I think there's going to be a revolution. Well, you you are the one who told me that they're doing ghost kitchens, right? What's a ghost kitchen? Okay. Yeah. So um, most of you know, especially young people. Um, a lot of young people are like resorting to like Uber Eats um, so basically people are getting lazy you know and just ordering food from home I think most and, people relate to this yeah yeah, yeah from their phones um, and uh, um, <laughs> I gotta open this bottle one second keep going Ghost Kitchen. I'm, yeah, I know. I, I'm trying to think, like... Okay, so where I was going was... There's, like, a speed bump in the road right now. Like, um, fees and stuff. All the restaurants are, like, realizing that, like, Uber Eats takes a cut. And they're raising their prices and everything. So it's making, like, Uber Eats and stuff super expensive. And a lot of, like, you know, like, young people are backing out of ordering Uber Eats all the time. And I feel like ghost kitchens are going to freaking um, change the mentality of all this and maybe even have, like, their own drivers or something. And BurgerFi is actually starting their own ghost kitchens all over the country, especially in Chicago. I like that idea. Basically, they're going to cut the whole, like, you know, they're not going to have people taking orders. It's just going to be a pickup window, and that's it. So they're going to prepare orders that are placed via mobile. Um... They're going to supply, like, the pickup orders, and they're going to get delivered. Yeah. Um, whether or not they supply the drivers, I don't know. But I feel like they're going to revolutionize. Revolution- <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, they got yeah. two technologies yeah, for yeah. that. They're, they're going to change the way the fucking world works. They got you know, current, like, yeah. current right now is with, like, social, what do they call it exactly, but um, Uber and Lyft, Lyft where they've right. got um combination of, social media whatever yeah they're using um, uh, there's gotta be some nice technical so term where it's, yeah there's so many platforms now that are popping up um where it's it's taking human drivers uh, everyone knows what it is so i know yeah fucking... uh, there's bite squad and you know like 
Urban Spoon, I think, is one, and you know, so many just like websites that are like trying yeah. to milk off of like delivery or pickup yeah, yeah. and all that. And they've got the they've got the algorithm. They got the the AI HQ that can yeah. keep it uber efficient, so that if your job is in one uh, urban area to just do food orders all night long, you'll be surprisingly efficient. Mm-hmm. You don't even have to work your brain, and then yeah, the computer's just you know, yeah. go here, go here, and then it's like, oh, you're the fucking next guy to go to KFC, which is a quarter mile away, and then go over here. It's very very efficient, but to me, I mean, not just to me, but to anybody, you know, the fucking all the scientists that are working on this too, <laughs> is uh, drones are going to be the thing that just takes it to the oh next God, level yeah. of yeah. just fucking raw efficiency. And that's where you don't need a driver that needs to possibly have to interact with a human being to pick up the food or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. just nothing but these ghost kitchens. And I think McDonald's, Burger King, every place that has an established brand, unless they want to just piss away their brand and just get fucking taken over by BurgerFi <laughs> and other companies are going to do it right and get completely washed out. Um, I think these companies are going to develop their ghost kitchens and cut labor costs and yeah. maybe possibly dedicate entire you know facilities that used to house walk-in diners and drive through people and maybe just cut all that out and just use the entire McDonald's facility yeah. you know a previous place that used to have customers come in and just make the place a more generative burger producing fucking uh, facility mm-hmm. and then out of the chimney is constantly rising and falling fucking drones delivering Big Macs. That's my vision of the future. That's my prophecy. It's uh, dystopian for sure. It's it's hell. Uh, fucking kill yourself now if you don't want to fucking deal with this. But um, that's what we're in for. And yeah, you know, rising and falling from two different chimneys. One's inbound and one's outgoing. Uh, drones, Big Mac, Big Mac drones, uh, and but here is BurgerFi, yep, <laughs> to the rescue. So, uh, but they're they're they they seem to be more cutting edge than fucking McDonald's because McDonald's hasn't put out anything. I'm sure they're in the works on it with Ghost Kitchen and stuff. But I like how BurgerFi is outspoken about this is part of their business model. This is part of their plan. Mm-hmm. It's very pandemic ask, very twenty uh, twenty first century, very. Post 2020, yeah. I guess uh, yeah. logistics for fast food and like they just seem to be with it. Like they're when they talk about like going gung ho ghost kitchens, um, that tells me like they're trending with the times, man. They're ready to like fucking supplant a Wendy's or a Burger King or some some other force in the market that may not trend technologically in the right direction, they're going to drop off. Mm-hmm. And if Burger King or Burger Fi is trending with the fucking drone delivery ghost kitchens, I think they're going to fucking possibly be a top three. Yeah. And we're talking about it uh, at the cost of fucking nothing right now. You know, this is, this could be one of those Cinderella tales of, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you you buy you put five hundred bucks into it and you're a fucking millionaire a few years later. So, it's, yeah. I think that's why Devin continues to love on this because he believes in the brand. Yeah, um, um, it's one of those like feel good like eat, eat kind of places too. Like, um, you know, like everybody is all about like oh yeah organic eating and stuff. Like, I don't really fall for that. I would say like I, I didn't mean to use fall for it, but you know like. Uh, I definitely would prefer something organic over, you know, processed. I could obviously. talk an hour on that topic, by the way. Obviously. The future would, of that. But yeah. yeah, yeah, go ahead. But sometimes, like, the term is, like, misused, you know. Like, it's just, like, a catch-all. Um, and definitely, like, BurgerFi uses, like, you know, local ingredients and all that. And so they're catering towards, you know, the more wealthy, I guess. Like, they're put in neighborhoods that are, like obviously like more upscale and stuff so there's more money there yeah yeah. so you know like if if they succeed in those neighborhoods they're gonna do really well is my point you know like yeah (laughs) that's kind of just like a a no-brainer uh like i've had some people like come up to me and go but they're a healthy burger i don't i don't want a healthy burger when i want a burger and it's like um it's still an 
unhealthy burger. It's just like you know, like the ingredients are I, f- I taken you. from organic places or whatever. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It's I don't know. I I I just I love everything about the model. Um, you got like Martha Stewart and stuff back behind it. She's like one of the uh, board members and stuff. You know, like. Ah. Yeah, it's, yeah. I feel like it's a you can't go wrong sort of thing. Yeah, it is nice to see some big wigs in the industry kind of giving it the thumbs up. She's gotten in trouble before in the stock market. So well, <laughs> Hopefully, maybe, she doesn't do it again. Yeah, maybe she's uh, maybe she's propping up fake burger. <laughs> you know, this is all just some kind of uh, pump and dump scheme. <laughs> kind of, I will say, like water. <laughs> I will say Burger Pie's onion ring onion ring is like probably the best I've ever had. Well see and that's what's undeniable about it is when yeah. you when you've when the butter meets the mouth, you know, and oh, yeah. you and fucking taste this. Their chicken tenders are really freaking good. One of the best I've ever had, and then like you mix it with like their uh honey uh honey it's a pepper, like a chipotle or something. Honey chipotle sauce or whatever. Oh my god, it's so good. Okay. So. All right. So they got yeah. they got what it takes to be in demand. Yeah. They as got far some as the food delicious goes. items. All right. So. All right. You might almost have me sold on this. <laughs> at six dollars yeah. a share right now. Oh God, that's stupid cheap. All right. And that makes the market cap like 150 mil, and they have 150 locations. So you're talking one million dollar a location. It's stupid cheap compared to like Shake Shack. Shake Shack is like in the billions. Shake Shack is like I think three billion or some See, crazy amount. You know, this is where I don't know that much about market lingo, market pop talk, but I guess Shake Shake Shack. You know, you've if mentioned you wanna... Shake Shack a lot to me in the past, Devin. Mm-hmm. I've come to find find out, Devin, that uh, Shake Shack is uh, infamously overhyped, okay. and Logan Paul and fucking Twitch streamer and like. Oh, yeah. Just clearly a pump and dump, kind of like NFTs, kind of like uh, crypto uh, shit coins and stuff. <laughs> like Shake Shack is pretty much in that realm. I've come to find. So um, I mean, you watched that video. I mean, it's used as a huge example of you know, like like one of the worst stocks to possibly invest in. So you watched that video where they tasted Burger Fi and they were like, "Oh my God, this is like equivalent, if not better, than Shake Shack." Yeah. I mean, you, you watched it. I showed it to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, I'm, so, yeah. I agree. It's only a matter of time. Like, people are concerned about, like, monthly, like, fluctuations. That doesn't matter. Like, just believe in the product and you'll be fine. I, I would just only be worried that. It's me being uh, purely uh, fucking uh, speculative now, uh, uh, logical, um transparent i guess my uh conspiracy theory minded uh schizo uh, you know you could apply any one of those words to my thought process right now but like maybe burger fi is like this too good to be true story or it's like the ultimate fucking uh I know, yeah. trap yeah. you and scam you kind of like kind of yeah. like uh shake shack you know, you know it's that's all, why it's so cheap right now is because everybody it's a fud that's fud right and that's fear uncertainty and doubt from Possibly other people that share my my fucking weird so gut feeling. Right yeah. Everything sounds so perfect. It sounds so <laughs> so right. But then again, everything I said. Okay, so in the past twenty fucking minutes or so, of me talking about the logistics of why ghost kitchens and future of drone deliveries makes so much sense here. It's like <laughs> it's like what are the, it, the only way these motherfuckers could fail is if they don't have the capital to invest in that technology and pursue it. And, I mean, the only way it would fail is if people stopped going to the restaurants. And if you walk up to the restaurants, at least the ones around me in Tampa, they're all full. Okay. How, how is that going to fail? With your own eyes, you've seen these places, yeah. burgers being drooled upon. And if you uh, don't live around there, look on Google, go to those locations, look at reviews. They get a review pretty much every day. And these and are busy restaurants, huh? That's like one it's like, out of every twenty customers that like actually like leaves a like a review. Hey, so. do you think they have a single restaurant that's open that isn't very busy on a daily basis? Yeah. Or does it sound like yeah, I, yeah. Um, so 
you're gonna find some restaurants that are like in the middle of nowhere that are like franchises that are run by like shitty owners obviously and they're run down and they close eventually but franchise ones are all going in like prime locations so you got like miami okay. Beach, you got downtown tampa you got like you know like hot spots gotcha you know? gotcha and those are all booming all of those are real. Hey, hey, I want to take this in a different direction until this video just runs out of steam. And I don't so know. So that's the thing is they started as a franchise. And they just sold last year to like become public, and so they're changing up big time. So yeah. you can't you can't like look at the franchise locations and be like, oh yeah, that's the whole company as a whole. You know, like that's not true. Um, they're they're changing up big time, and got gotcha. you. I feel like they're gonna take off from here. Yeah, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Yeah. I guess, yeah, that's part of your corporate, part of your business structure. It's going to make you money by selling franchise licenses or what? I don't know, fucking technical terms. But it's like if somebody's willing to pay you several hundred thousands of dollars to open up a location, a bad location, you know what I'm saying? Like, and they they don't perform that great, but they're but the company's profiting from yeah. So them taking the license. I think it makes sense. That... Yeah, they're they're paying a small fee every year, you know, relative to revenues. They're paying a small fee and they're taking on all the responsibilities of like getting the ingredients and all that shit. Yeah. Providing yeah. the customers and they could be doing a shit job, you know, like it it could be <laughs> This is where it gets complicated. I, you know, I don't want to speak outside of like our our um knowledge or you know stuff that we know for fact but it's like i know with there's been controversy with companies like uh quiznos i watched a whole documentary in quiznos That's probably why they where, yeah. where they uh the the company itself like mandated to the other franchisees that you have to order your ingredients from company x yep. it turns out quiznos owned company x you know what i'm saying you know where i'm going with this yeah. like yeah. Uh, quality to price ratio was not nearly as good as you get on the open market, uh -huh. but Especially you were enslaved you in to this areas of the country where like rent is like way different. Yes. You know? So like ingredient prices might be way cheaper, but guess what? This, the, the corporate would fine you like crazy if you weren't following the, the franchise yep. mandate or whatever, the corporate mandate on like, you have to order our ingredients from X. And um, yeah, if you're if you're not abiding by very rigid uh, guidelines, you get fined like crazy. These places would lose their license and just go. And, and it was they get sued by the Quiznos. It was like almost like Quiznos turned into a scam company. And um, yeah. and then yeah, if if you were managed, to, if you did manage to make a profitable business at a quiznos you're working your ass off well quiznos was making millions off of you yeah. because you were buying all your ingredients from their farms yep. Yep. and they were overcharging you you know and somehow you're turning a profit because you're selling so many fucking sandwiches because yeah. you're slaving away yeah. um anyways bad company right there yeah. um and, and that's part of the risk of like buying burger fi who knows like the intentions of like you know the the company that basically like uh the acquisition company you know because it was a spec uh which is like a acquisition company meaning um a blank check company as they call it so um they kind of like acquired burgerfy for a written amount and then sold off shares to the public so the public now owns it now um and you know like there there are cases where somebody runs off with the money sort of thing you know but i i haven't seen like any indications of that yet like uh there is this one dude that owns like majority of the shares and he sold off a good amount last year but he stopped selling them and i think he's only doing it because you know he wants to like like disperse his like portfolio i know? get it spread it out yeah, obviously, which is smart for any any person. Doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're Papa John, you know, of, of uh, Papa John's Pizza. You want to like fucking spread out your like portfolio, and so it makes sense that he was kind of doing that. Everybody was like freaking out for a little while about that, but it, he still owns like a, a hefty share, so it, it's not that scary. Yeah. Um, he stopped selling though a long time ago, and so it, it seems more stable now. Gotcha. Uh, but. All it needs is one good piece of news. And they also That's bought Anthony's saying, yeah. Coal Fired Pizza and uh, the Wing the wing Joint, which is like a ghost kitchen. And I feel like that was really good. 
um, Anthony's is pretty popular, you know, like, you've heard of it, right, Dave? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Never yeah, been, yeah. but I think there's, I forget where I've, I've seen it before. I feel like I've seen it all around. Right next to Countryside High School, yeah. Okay. Over in, um, yeah. Um, there was the one that, like. Right remember, next like, to the high school, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I know yeah, that spot, yeah. 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 There's a coin shop over there, yeah. yeah. Next to the Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah. So that was like the first time I ever had it was actually at that location. And I wasn't a fan at first, um, but I've had it since then, and I, I like it better now um, because it's, it's, you know, a little overdone for my taste. But yeah. it was still still good pizza. But the, so the, popular, the big so. upside with this company could be, um, like you were saying, a good piece of news, a good... Uh, a, a good um, optimistic business uh, step up. Oh yeah, I, I mean they're profitable and everything. Like, the, they're a good like acquisition. Um, I guess an ex- what would be like to me an example of something like, in the restaurant industry of like an announcement that could be that could stir up a lot of uh, optimism with investors would be like signing on with. Um, Okay, from my experience, I was in the military, and, like, every base would, uh, every AFES, every base, every Air Force base and Army base had an AFES on base, Mm -hmm. and there'd be, like, a food court. Okay. And there were, like, certain, what was one of them? Subway. Subway was in, at every base I ever went to, every AFES would have a Subway. You know what I mean? But someone would be, like, uh, that fucking pretzel shop we used to see him at uh, auntie Anne's. auntie Anne's used to be at like every base i was at you know what i mean so it's like they got in on the fucking short list of like yeah. restaurants that would be at every base yeah. around the globe or at least maybe it'd be conus or whatever continental u.s um but you know that'd be an example of like a partnership or some you know just one of the many kind of things that could just out of the blue kind of like hit the news wave and just be talked about like burgerfy hey burgerfy's made this move i don't you know i guess you get that upside with every kind of small up and coming um food fast food place yeah, yeah. but um so, so with, within the uh, acquisition of uh anthony's came a uh, roasted wing which is a ghost kitchen, and it's basically, like, they cook wings inside Anthony's, like, coal, like, ovens, and they roast them, not fry them, and it's already a huge hit in South Tampa. Like, I've already noticed. Cool. Um, you look at, like, reviews on, like, Uber Eats, and, like, they have a lot of reviews already, so it's, like, a huge hit there. Cool. And, I mean, that's what I go for, too. Like, I mean, I prefer, like, roasted over, like, fried, because, you know obviously like the health like benefits yeah yeah and they can be just as tasty is there one close to you over there yeah yeah Uh, a couple miles like a mile and a half nice dude nice Uh, so roasted wing is part of the acquisition and i feel like that's going to be a massive hit yeah it's still kind of located in southeast or just florida right now are they um yeah anywhere like there's an anthony's so if, if we we're in countryside right now, we could probably like order it. But um, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I'll close on this. Uh, going for fifty three minutes now. <laughs> uh, finishing our beers here. Um, last <laughs> fucking uh, prophetic thought. I know I said my uh, my prophecy of the vision of the skyline in the future, in the near future, ten years from now, cloudy with the uh, with drones everywhere. Uh, get used to it it's coming um, how about the future where uh, beef substitute meat substitutes uh, plant based meats just fucking take over the takeover of plant based uh, of, of meats the whole meat industry completely destroyed and that's where okay so fucking know nothing dave talking about investing in the companies i don't even know where to invest but uh where's proteins coming from what's being grown to uh supplant beef as a protein i and i want to say i don't know i don't know much about what i'm talking about right now i'm just fucking drunk dave 
4 a.m. Right. Uh, but you, mushrooms, babe. baby. Mushrooms and beans, lentils. I feel like any agriculture that's tied to producing key ingredients in recipes that become the best at but there could be some technological revelation in uh in artificial meat where they're like fucking cloning meat or <laughs> they're actually growing meat out of cells and stuff and it's we're like doing that and this it is like disgusting yeah this is organisms that were never alive but it, we grew meat in a petri dish or something you know something insane just, like, eat, like vegetable patties like I'm with you. Has, like, a veggie fry I love those patties, by the Dude, way. Dude, it's made from vegetables. You like bite into it, and you see like green and orange and stuff. You know, like carrots yeah. and green yeah. beans. But how's it like, taste? Fucking oh, good. Oh, it's so good. It's, it's good. So good. Yeah. yeah, I know. I've had some, man. I'd it's rather have that good. over a fucking fake like protein. Yeah, like, yeah. I get just something's it. wrong. Oh. You're almost like, am I eating a fetus or like, am yeah. I? Am I eating something satanic? <laughs> yeah, they're talking about like growing fucking protein it's patties and clone oh. life form. It turns out you're eating like human fucking uh, genetic fucking oh. tissue that's just grown genetic. You want cancer? That's how you get cancer. You're right about that, man. <laughs> you're right about stuff that like human beings. God did not want us to ever eat this. It's fucking uh, lab-grown meat tissues and yeah. meat fibers. Yeah, I'm with you on that. It's yeah. kind of a. It just sounds fucked up. Yeah. It sounds like something that our if you know if God's out there looking down upon us, he's not gonna be too happy about that. <laughs> but he'd be okay with like a uh, mushroom and lentil and uh, uh, soy, yeah. you know, whatever may be mixed up into these uh, plant-based delicious uh, meat substitute burgers but i see a big emergent industry in that i can see that just being trendy i could just see that becoming more and more mainstream where as the flavor gets better as the as the demand increases the supply will um well they're going to increase supply and it's going to bring costs down you know when there's when there's more incentive to produce larger quantities of these key mushroom and key ingredients, I just see the whole thing kind of like working together in a multi-cylinder engine where both the popularity and the, the cultural acceptance, you know, of, hey, go with, go with these plant-based. So, so there'll be companies that, first of all, need to carry this stuff, but even if they don't, it's just like, hey, you're taking a business risk because McDonald's may really heavily promote you know their new veggie burger line mm -hmm. and then they could just take off and just leave you in the dust so i think a lot of companies will be pressured into com keeping yeah. up with the veggie burger stuff and promotion over product has proven itself like huge lately yeah um i mean this is like a wild wild fucking example but um nfts <laughs> any, any dude in their 30s has probably seen all these fucking ads for hymns and you know all the like you know hair loss supplements and all that stuff yeah. versus like you know traditional stuff like Rogaine or even Kirkland's fucking hair loss stuff um, you know it's thrown all over their Facebook and all their money goes into ad you know revenue it's the same product though you know like and they're probably doing way better than you know the old school like fucking rogaine and whatnot um be because of that because every yeah. facebook ad is you keep scrolling through facebook and all you see is hymns 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 and yeah. the other one i forgot the other one i can't remember the other one but it's, it's my entire freaking ad and i'm like ugh. only because i'm in my 30s you know like yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things where you skimp out on, you know, it reduces your margin when you got to, for every dollar you make, mm -hmm. 30 cents went into marketing. Yeah, yeah. But guess uh, what? You right. still beat out all your competition because you did it that way. Yeah. yeah. If, if, if that's what Draft you're saying. Kings is another one trying to do that. Um, all their money, all their freaking money goes into rev or uh, ad revenue. and they're Draft barely, Kings? Yeah, they're barely, like, bringing in, like, much revenue. And they're just like dumping so much money into just like sponsorships and like ad revenue and all that. They're losing so much money. And we'll see if it pays off. It yeah, might yeah. work. It might not. I don't know. Yeah. But no, as I get of right it. now, they're a horrible business. And gotcha. we'll see if it pays off. You know, it has to catch on. 
No, they're, I'm, they're just hoping it catches on. I'm a fan of the business model because I'm a fan of the fucking take chances in life and, you know, get noticed, get get your name out there, and they're then... Just dumping too much money for me. Gotcha. I, I don't want to touch their stock. Like, I've told so many people this, and I've, I've been right Avoid so draft far, kings. but, you know, they're probably going to be right in the end if they wait years and years, you know, like... Yeah. But in the short term, I've been right. I've been saying, oh, fuck that. I'm not going to touch draft kings. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm big on... I, I haven't fucking looked into this at all, but I'm... I'm Mr. Shaman, uh, future, uh, prophesizer. <laughs> you know, fucking, uh... They have a lot of competition. That's the thing, too, is it's all opened up now. So. Well, I like to meditate. Floodgates are open. I like to meditate and think on the future, and when I, I know for a fact that plant-based meats are going to blow up, it makes me think, you know... I don't get the answer of like where can you put your money to capitalize if that's the truth, Dave. If you see that it's gonna happen, uh, but like simple-minded me goes like uh, mushroom farms, uh, protein shit, uh, soybeans. You know, I don't know exactly where to put your money, but I just know that that's gonna be a cultural phenomenon. So I feel like if you can tie your money up with anything that's involved with that production, I wanted to use that as a segue though to You're taking a one in ten chance because you don't know which company is going to become the biggest. That's true. That's the other thing is like you, know, you, you can be right on your have, vision uh, of the future, but you may not pick the right company that, yeah. You have Impossible and Beyond Me and. Uh, that's the other simple way of investing in that prophecy. If you if you bank on that shot calls being right, it's like well you got a few brands that are already you know broken into the market yeah and they're really trying to take the throne and they don't have like it's a kind of equal f- for like 10 years yeah 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 Whereas like origin that company i told you about that's uh carbon neutral um yeah or, or carbon carbon negative i guess um they have a patent that like lasts for another 10 years and they, this company is called Origin, and they make Origin manu- materials. Yeah. Origin materials, and they basically a plastic substitute that's biodegradable. So yeah. it'd be very useful for companies like Pepsi with bottling, yep. bottling companies, uh, uh, manufacturing. Procter and Gamble, Pepsi, Coke, all those. Yeah. Uh, make boxes, uh, bottles, anything that needs yeah. to be structurally sound in house um, liquids. liquids or edibles. Possibly and canned goods. I think they already have partnerships with like uh, car companies and stuff for you know just random pieces in cars. So bio de- a new biodegradable material. I'm yeah. big on materials, dude. I'm big on material technology. I think that could be a big yeah. thing. Um, they already have contracts. What's it's the company like, called again? All they have to do is execute. It's called Origin. Origin, Origin materials. O-R-G-N. Good shit. G N. Or I. O R. O R G N. Okay. The, uh, ticker. I like that. That's O-R-G-N. a stock ticker. Yeah, that sounds like just like a technology that's like, yeah, we need that. That'll that'll be a hit. That's gonna work. Um, my thought, my th- prophecy in the future is there's gonna be a three D reprintable material that's recyclable. I like the idea of a non recyclable, of a biodegradable uh, material, like Devin's talking about. I see that being huge. Being like everywhere, I can see the government mandating that too, or possibly like taxing, oh, yeah. or giving huge tax yeah. benefits to companies that switch to a material like this because it is better on the environment. Oh, yeah. It does cut costs in the long run. It is better for the earth, so it's more life sustaining, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's going to be more um, government incentive possibly to use this material, and then those companies that don't and decide to trend with the old way are going to be faced either with higher taxes or just no tax benefits. So all the more reason to see like a company like this breaking out origin. I like that. Um, it's not brand new, just like IPO would or spacked or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's still brand new. It's beaten down. Like it's already like way under my average. My average is like, you know, $9 a share and it's like six or something. Wow. So you've lost your ass you on stop. origin. What? Did you stop? I did. Yeah, I kind of just tapped my foot okay. on the floor. Yeah, there's no po- me, No, there's no possum under the okay. under the porch that's gonna come bite you in the heels. Um, there's no possums that are gonna bite you. Well, that might have been a possum <laughs> in the tree. Um, 
I got this this thought that maybe they'll come out with a 3D uh, printing material that's recyclable, but that's a whole realm that, like, I mean, imagine you, how much waste goes into 3D printing because you know something fucks up. So yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I can just see that as, as they in, increase the uh, the um, utility of what can be printed you know i mean i've already talked of like they're going to be 3d printing cars and you know it's going to just blow your houses yeah yeah it's going to start to blow our minds with what is produced from 3d printing and it makes me think like okay any company that's involved with the materials that are either the most structurally sound or the most recyclable you know i think there will be tiers in different like categories of like what material what medium you're printing with yeah. it's like oh that's a shit where when you're done with your project you can just pulverize it and reuse it mm -hmm. you know versus like oh you're going for something that can have combustion chambers you know you you're trying to print an engine or there can be like fucking yeah. you know like you can't do that yeah. I don't well I don't know I mean, I mean not yet maybe we come out with like a crazy ass material that's what I'm saying baby that's my prophecy we're not there yet I don't, I don't think that can happen oh uh, you're not thinking like a fucking t proper 21st century man you know <laughs> shit's gonna happen I, yeah we're, but you're saying we're we're too far away to fucking even start thinking about companies to yeah, invest yeah. in for that kind of far-fetched dream oh, yeah. That's far fetched as hell. Oh my god, you're saying I'm fucking. You're saying my prophecies aren't going to be true? Yeah. In our lifetime, I'll bet because you. Because you can't even say, like, steel can, like, withstand that. It has to be, like, properly, like, fucking manufactured to do that. Hey. It has to be. Hey, I believe in our scientists. You know? From, from not, my brain, it's not I can't. It's molded that way. It's fucking, like, you know, drop hammer forged and all kinds of crazy They're just going to print that shit out. It's, Trust me. Yeah, They're going to print it out with a material that you haven't heard of. It's going to be possibly from another planet. Mine it from <laughs> Mars. I don't know. They'll come out with it. I just believe in our scientists, man. <laughs> Exponential growth in technology. That's, that's the only trend I've been noticing. So, yeah. given my... Uh, Given my trend analysis, I'd say within about five years we'll be uh, manufacturing uh, nuclear power plants that'll be 3D printed, 3D <laughs> printed uh, <laughs> nuclear power plants. Uh, that's what I think will happen. It's uh, it just follows the data if you follow it. Yeah. 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 Um, so that's, that's yeah, it's 3D printers, 3D printing material. How about lithium? Uh, lithium mines. You've, you 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 want to invest in lithium at all? Or lithium mines? Too late. Too late? Yeah. It makes you think it's too Dude, late. Everybody's been so high on, like, fucking EVs for, like, the last, like, two years. What's an EV? Electric vehicles. Oh, my God. Like, you got, like, Rivian's uh, fucking IPO in a, what was it, a trillion dollars or something? All right, I hear you on this. I hear on all the Tesla's, o <sighs> Tesla's overvalued, Rivian's uh, scam... Uh, For the near term, Nikola Tesla is overvalued. Yes, Nikola was a scam, right? Long term, it could be like uh, a good investment, but like, I don't you know. know, blah 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 is all I'm saying. I like Fisker because Fisker's still only like three or four billion. How about I like Ford because I'm old yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. I like, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I like but... Ford at five dollars. Um, now it's twenty one. No, I don't like that. Yeah, but okay. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think a layer deeper now. I'm trying to go a little bit beneath the surface. Like we all I agree. Cash out of Ford, so I'm done with Ford. Um, it could still hey, go up. Yeah. Hey, I think we can all agree that hey, uh, vehicle electric vehicles are gonna be a thing in the future, right? Like that's obvious. But I we like need to a go combination. I feel like the world needs a combination of the two. Okay. Well, fuck it. Regardless. <laughs> Regardless, I like to go a layer if we deeper. Go all electric, like if everybody went electric at once, it'd be a fucking nightmare. Um, okay, well, but still, if we had half and half, that'd be great. Hey, that'd be great. What are all these fucking great ideas and possibilities of the future and everything? Everyone will agree with. What does all have in common? Lithium. Lithium. Lithium, dude. Oh, you like Lithium. Nirvana? No, I do. I do. <laughs> I like that. I like in utero, in utero. Um, no, it's um, it's that is what all these visions 
have in common is they need um, batteries. They need, you know, yep. high capacity voltage fucking cells. Yep. I'm trying to sound like tech. I don't know what I'm talking about, but lithium. <laughs> lithium, kind of a rare earth metal, right? Yeah. It's not common. Yeah. It's not very common. Yeah. It ain't no silver. You know, it's not pr- ne- is, like, necessarily precious, but. Mining companies don't have a great return. Even gold and stuff, like. I don't know, like, if if you look at anybody who invested in gold... Okay, I get you. Two decades ago, 20 years ago, their return is garbage. Okay. It's it's almost like lithium is such a necessity, and, the, and it's so expensive to mine that it's almost like lithium's cost is derivative of the cost of mining it. Um, it's not many mines hit price, a yeah. gold mine of a lithium fucking pocket underneath the crust where they're like, hey... Uh, we struck gold, you yeah. know, was, yeah. we got lucky, uh, yeah, there's not much upside in a lithium mine is what you're saying, Yeah. I got you, I got you, I got you, see, I don't know what I'm talking about, I'm just I could drunk be wrong. and I don't know. speculating, like, you know, I've looked into, like, barrack gold, you know, like, uh, and their ticker is literally gold, you know, like, yeah, yeah, you tell me about this, it's a and mine company where the ticker on the stock exchange is G O L D. All it is is like an inverse, like of the uh, South Africa economy, just like inverse of the economy over the last like fucking forty years. Your meaning on that is because people, when they're in um, doubt of of the economy or the spending power of the of the dollar, basically, every time the economy goes down, they like switch the over to goes down. People want to bu- invest yeah. in it's, gold, precious metal. Yeah. So there's a, yeah, there's a stock exchange, there's a, yeah, there's a stock ticker for a, a gold mining company yeah. called G-O-L-D, and people, are, gold, yeah. they invest, like the biggest one. Yeah, that's smart, they want to invest in quote unquote gold, but I don't know, I, I like to think of more utility stuff, like gold I see as just uh, kind of like your physical Bitcoin tie your money up in gold it's precious it's rare it does have utility value intrinsic value but it also just is rare does it it has a gold right and my understanding of gold is that it's, it's very it's irreplaceable it's shiny. and it's shiny I don't isn't it irreplaceable in certain electronic uh i mean it's not that i don't think it has many uses to be honest really unless, unless nothing the Indians that know and that's why we're fucking <laughs> we're like you know sending it to them eh yeah. Otherwise, I like that just theory. Like, it looks dude. nice. Oh yeah, it looks pretty. Oh. Bling bling. But what? Yeah, I thought there was something gold. to be. I like silver more. Silver. I thought there was something to be said about its uh, <laughs> electronic um, conductance. No. Its contact conductance. You know, as far that as that was like, like a gimmick that like they that to monster push cables. Them, like, <laughs> yeah, in like the two thousands, they tried to push that shit. Like, I'm oh, pretty yeah. sure it's true, oh, man. Yeah, monster cables. It's gold plated. Pretty sure it's true, man. No, it's not. No. I don't it's know. Stupid. I think it's true. No, it's phony. I think when it comes to like friction it was fit, plated. It's not like it was actually solid. Exactly. Gold. It's, it's all plated. <laughs> yeah, it's about the plating. It's about the we're too nodes meet and you want to transfer electrons across it <laughs> you want to carry a, an accurate signal i don't know i learned this electronic principles yeah i want to say gold is yeah you're folding your arms and, and like you disagree <laughs> with me man. um but i can see where the cost definitely doesn't justify where if silver is just as good if not slightly better then it's like why would you go with gold i can't remember i i want to say copper was like actually like the legit the best. best at like transferring I could see that being possibly for like current for you know most efficient with current yeah. but signal fidelity I think favors gold but what do I know I'm just some retard yeah. with a camera that's why the aliens want it yeah uh, spaceships <laughs> yeah yeah that was just another thought of mine though was uh between 3D printing I don't know I just think of things to invest in you want to think of like you want to prophesize on the future and to do that you have to meditate you have to think deeply hardly and uh and accurately and profoundly and intelligently and fucking uh with wisdom beyond your years you know when it comes to you and you fucking you realize like 
Yeah. Almost like if you're if you can think back to five years ago, be like, Yeah, I remember five years ago where I was that be like, How easy would it be to just know what you know now about five years ago? Yeah. But it's impossible. Oh yeah, it's like twenty twenty. Yeah. It's like you look back at all the companies that their stocks like through the roof and it's like, Oh my god, I knew that. Yeah, but I think we can all fucking, if we just stop and really put some effort into it, we can kind of think about the future and be somewhat accurate. More accurate than we'd be if we just never, you know, gave it any thought. So once you put in a ton of thought, a ton of fucking meditation and, you know, asking God for the truth and then God gives you (laughs) a message, and it could just be a schizophrenic fantasy, you know, it could be way off base. But maybe you're right, and then you can make a maneuver. It, you know, uh, changes the world and changes your life by investing in hashtag verify. <laughs> that's a good closer. Buy what you like. That's that's my only. I guess that's more. Yeah, that's more reason. If you buy like anything verify. tech, buy it. Buy the stock for it, rather. Yeah, true, true, true. So, yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> coming for me, I believe in drones in the sky and 3D printing shit. So. Mm-hmm. Buying a 3D printing yeah, buy companies and <laughs> buying a drone technology, buying a ghost kitchens. Anybody who's doing a ghost kitchen to deliver food via drones, um, buying a lithium. All right, I'll end on that. This is a good video. Hour 15 minutes. Oh, yeah, okay. it was long. Yeah, it wasn't very good. We that four hours if we included like what we said before the video. We were going to talk about Wattards. <laughs> We're gonna talk about a lot of. Break. I, I can't. Uh, I can't continue. Oh yeah, I'm with you. I'm, oh, with you. I'm still filming. <laughs> I'm probably out of capacity. I'll end it here in a sec. But you gonna take a piss and then, yeah. then you want to talk about Wattards? No, we won't. We gotta go to bed. Um. Yeah. Thanks for having that talk with me. That was fun. I'll end it now.